Welcome today to today's SCJ Think Tank with Nemanja Darijevic. Did I s say that correctly, Nemanja? Yep, pretty much. Thank you. <laughs> of Pixel Road Designs. Um, Nemanja is going to be going over the importance of visual marketing and especially how you need it more in 2016, more so than ever before. Um, but before we get started uh, with Nemanja's presentation, I'm uh, going to go through some housekeeping here at the SEJ Marketing Think Tank. Um, first of all, you'll see that you're using GoToWebinar for this um, webinar presentation. Um, we're going to be launching a couple polls uh, via the webinar control panel, and you'll see them pop up on your screen. When we do the polls, please take the time to fill them out. It's really helpful, um, not only so uh, the mind you can understand you more, but also for his overall presentation. And it's a fairly interactive presentation, so it should be fun. Um, also, uh, during the webinar itself, um, we're going to be presenting for about 40 minutes or so, 30 to 40 minutes. And uh, wh when questions arise during the webinar, please fill them out in the uh, question box on your GoToWebinar control panel. After uh, Nemanja is done with his presentation, we're going to be uh, going through those questions and answering them live uh, right here on the air. Um, also, be sure to tell all of your Twitter followers that you're uh, participating in SEJ Think Tank today using hashtag SEJ Think Tank. Um, at the same time, uh, we're going to, after the Q&A, we're going to be sending out a survey for everyone um, on the Think Tank today and uh, with information about our, our next SEJ webinar. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to new, you, Nemanja. Welcome to the SEJ Think Tank. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone, and greetings from Europe. Um, welcome to the SEJ uh, webinar, Visual Marketing in 2016. Um, I would like to talk today a bit about uh, design, uh, and I would like to uh, try to explain why it works so good, uh, and hopefully to inspire you to create some of your own, uh, well, to get some ideas for your new uh, projects. Um, my name is Nemanja Darjevic and I'm a creative and development director at Pixel Road Designs and while I have some 15 years of experience in marketing design and other fields um, you know, on all sorts of projects ranging from everyday projects you know small scale to large scale uh, big international companies this is actually the first time I'm doing a, <laughs> a presentation like this online so uh, bear with me and hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll make your hour and time worth of uh, your investment. Um, first off, I want to start with um, the situation out there, both online and offline. Uh, basically, uh, there's a jungle out there of information. All sorts of um, people, companies, and entities are trying to communicate with their potential customers, with their friends, both online and offline. There's so much noise. Um, on average, a person faces 174 newspapers worth of information every day. So it is a jungle. There is a big uh, competition out there to capture people's attention. And the thing is that uh, attention spans of, of uh, our potential users are getting shorter and shorter. Um, whenever a person lands on your website, uh, wherever they came from, uh, their, their subconscious parts of the brain form um, a first impression within only 50 millis uh, sorry, 15 um, milliseconds. Uh, that's just a bit longer than a blink of an eye, which is 30, 33 milliseconds. So um, it's not enough time to browse. It's not enough time to you know take a look at what you're showing me there. It's just enough time to for that subconscious part to uh, kick in and form that first impression that everything else is later being built upon. Um, you know how many times you entered the website, opened it, and closed it without ever knowing why you closed it, even if it contained some information that that you were interested in. So. With all that noise and, and short attention spans, um, it's increasingly important to capture people's attention and it's becoming an art. Um, you really need to master your art to, to be able to, to um, catch their attention, basically. Um, so um, let's 
take a look at how our brains work here. Um, with 30% of our brain's processing power accounted to uh, processing visual stimuli compared to all of the others, touch, hearing, and others, um, our brain is a major, major visual tool. Uh, it's pre-designed, basically, <laughs> uh, to, to digest uh, visual data from, from uh, the environment. Um, people often tell me when I, when I tell them this stat that, well, yeah, but reading is also uh, visual. That is correct, but reading also consists of other things that you need to do. You need to give the words the meaning, etc., connect them into sentences, etc., etc. And a research found that, that um, processing images in the brain is 60,000 uh, times more fast than, the, uh, than text only. So uh, with all that noise and um, those short attention spans, what is our strategy now? Uh, the beautiful thing that we have available uh, for <laughs> quite some time, and I'm pretty sure that most of you guys are using it here, um, are images. But not just any kind of image uh, you want with your post, with your communication out there. Uh, you really want those relevant images. Um, when included with a piece of the content you're serving to your potential users, uh, it the, rises the willingness to read a piece of content by 80% when it has a relevant image attached to it. Uh, and you can get a 94% more views compared to the content without relevant images. Now, we as marketeers, we know that uh, it's not just capturing attention here and right now. It's There's a lot in retention. We need to uh, have our, our users uh, 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 retain and remember us at the moment in time when they're ready to actually make the conversion to, to purchase something. And that's not necessarily, you know, at the first point of time they hear about you. So this is where a, a thing called uh, picture superiority effect comes into the play. Um, a recent experiment where um, scientists divided, uh, they had two groups of people uh, and they presented them with random sets of data. Uh, the first group was uh, presented with the information only through hearing, um, through voice, if you will, and the other group was presented with visuals, uh, with visual aids. Uh, this is the, the results that came in were stunning. After three days, uh, the questionnaire that was handed out to them, only 10% of people who were hearing only managed to retain the information, while 65% uh, managed to... Uh, 65% of those who, who were uh, seeing information, basically, who had visual aids, managed to retain that information. So again, this is the, the thing that proves that our brain is really hardwired to, to, to um, digest and work with, with visual data, and it is a really powerful tool for us. Um, and since I mentioned this, this experiment, I wanted to do a quick experiment of, of our own here, um, which brings us to the first poll question. Um, and I would like you to answer. I'm sorry? I'm launching it right now. So. Um, oh, OK. Thank you. Um, no problem. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what fruit was featured on the opening slide? And I'm giving you four um, possible answers here. Bananas, blueberries, raspberries, and I didn't notice or joined in late. So we've had about, um, let's see, 60% of the think tank attendees vote and make their choice. And uh, let's give you a couple more seconds to do so. Typically, like to hit 80% on this. So um, let's see what kind of voter turnout we can get today, the day after Super Tuesday. So um, we're at 73. OK, I'll do a count on 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. OK, I'm about to close the poll. So if you haven't voted, vote now. And here are the results. So what are your, what are your thoughts, Nemanja? Um, OK, most people, <laughs> a lot of people joined in late. Um, and from what I see, but it's really small here, right? Uh, 27% answered uh, raspberries, which is correct. And uh, 
I wanted to do this as kind of a proof of concept. Again, this wasn't a difficult question, and retention is very short. Um, but these things, whenever uh, whenever we do things, the tests like this, they pretty much work. They prove that visuals are very strong. You know, I placed an image of a random thing there, basically, uh, you know, a food item that doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the presentation, and still 27% uh, of people noticed it, and you know. Uh, manage to remember it later on. So, um, with that said, um, let's move on to the uh, talking a bit more about types of visual content out there. Just okay. Now I see my screen completely. Um, the first one, the branding, uh, probably the biggest one, the first one you do when you open a company, uh, logos, um, typography, styles, etc. Uh, web design, um, your user interfaces, user experiences, um, funneling to conversions, etc. And I like to call these two, uh, well not call, but you know, uh, put them in a bracket of uh, general marketing or the long term marketing. Uh, mostly because you won't do them on a daily basis, com contrasted to uh, the content marketing, which is slightly shorter term, but in terms of how you produce it, right, the, the effects are still really um, long term. Um, your photos, videos, memes, comics, and infographics. Um, and another thing that uh, to mention here is that uh, these all pretty much can be either brand or user generated. Um, if you launch a creative campaign, uh, you can get pretty good uh, user generated content, just like we're going to see in the next example. And that is a Share a Coke campaign uh, by the Coca Cola company that started in um, 2011. Uh, so you've probably seen this all around the place. You know, they, they placed uh, customer names on the packaging from cans to bottles, etc., hoping that they will uh, acquire media exposure. Exposure, and sure they did. You know, people <laughs> shared in all sorts of creative ways, and this campaign uh, brought two percent increase in sales for the Coke company for the first time ever after ten years of declining sales. So. There's a bunch of examples of these campaigns. Sometimes they can be tr well, they can be tricky to um, to to um, go with them uh, because most of the times they require a lot of testing in a small smaller focus groups uh, to test what actually because uh, sometimes what we think will work. Uh, won't actually work with people, and we will keep seeing <laughs> examples of things that fail, uh, even if we thought that they would. Um, okay, so the branding, um, as I said, the probably the biggest one out there, and one of the most important types of visual content. I'm going to limit here to the visual portion of it only. You know, the branding is consisted of a lot of other things, um, so. Everything from your logo, your colors, uh, typography that you're choosing, and styles of images that you're uh, presenting, everything said, uh, talks about who are you. Um, uh, your brand uh, sets expectations with people. Um, it, it, it also is an asset with an economic value, and you really need to play your cards right. You will create it at the very beginning once you once you create your company, uh, but later on you'll still be able to reinvent it again and again and improve it. Uh, now, the biggest thing when it comes to design of any type, uh, whether it's branding, web design, etc., uh, for me personally, is performance and how it works. Uh, Again, your branding sex sets expectations. It doesn't matter whether you personally like this shade of green or that shade of green, or whether you like the, the, the logo or not. You know, it, it is there for the purpose. Just like the most of the of the visual content that you will be creating, it needs to serve a purpose. So I placed a couple of logos down here on the on, on this slide, like uh, the latest McDonald's. Logo that changed from uh, red to, to, to green. Um, Google and Airbnb are here, uh, and you probably saw a couple of months back when Google changed 
their their branding uh, that um, how how much content they put out there how much uh, uh, conversations they started up uh, wh when they did it of course they they are huge but you can also utilize you know changes and investments that you make in your in your branding to um, basically create content right so next thing is the web design and uh, this is where most people who have never created a website or uh, were in the process of creating websites they would think that um, it's all about choosing the right colors, the images, and um, I don't know, um, typography. That is definitely true, and it is part of the web design. But the bigger part, again, just like with with branding, is the usability. It's its purpose and um, that experience that you're uh, giving your users, because your website is is. Uh, one big, big channel, one big way that your users communicate with and interact with you and your brand. So um, again, it really needs to serve that purpose, that funneling um, of, of, of people towards your com conversions and your goals. Uh, it plays a lot with psychology and uh, with 46% of people claiming that, uh, that the design of the website is one of the biggest things that they're, they're uh, considering when they're thinking about the credibility of a company they just saw, uh, you definitely want the website to be good um, and, and not poorly designed. Um, again, when it comes to experimentation, um, there are uh, curious things that, that, that happen online, uh, things that, that we, uh, we as marketeers sometimes, you know, um, think in a pretty straightforward way thinking everybody knows that you know but a couple of years back and I want to show you this example um, we were working in a market well where well this was probably five or six years ago uh, where online shopping was not that um, popular not because um, people don't, didn't know how to use computers but they just a did not trust the shopping online too much, and some of them did not how to how to do it. So a client approached to us, and and we came up with this really really simple solution that it took probably 30 minutes to implement. Like created a uh, one simple um, infographic style uh, in three steps explanation page where it says. You don't know how to order. Here's how. You know, add to cart. Tell us where to ship it. Boom, done. Um, it sounds so simple, but the results were stunning. They saw a drop in of 38% of calls to their call center, which is exactly what they wanted. So uh, sometimes even even really really simple things can can help you improve that that web design. Uh, photographs and illustrations. Uh, what are you showing your users from your product images to illustrating your uh, concepts and uh, deepening your stories with 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 uh, photographs and illustrations? Um, these are really really important. Uh, with 93% of users of people uh, saying that images are number one deciding factor when they're when they're purchasing things you need these things to be good and you want them to be good. Um, another study showed that people uh, when reading a blog article uh, that that was paired with uh, relevant images such as uh, infographic style images and things like that uh, actually are spending uh, more time looking at the images than the text itself. And um, I believe that only about 25% of the text is is actually being read on average when a person enters your blog. So again, images are very, very powerful and very important. Um, a dilemma that comes in here often is uh, whether we should use uh, stock or custom imagery. Um, and the best answer is both probably, but you need to be careful. You need to be careful with both of these. Uh, you want them to be of high quality, uh, whether stock or, or custom. But the biggest thing with, with, with the stock is that you must not overdo it and you need to be original. You know, whenever you're looking up for a proper stock image to pair it with your post, uh, don't just 
if 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 you search on any of the of the stock websites, for example, I don't know, beautiful girl, uh, and you click on the very first, it probably has three million downloads, and it's it's been featured on more than three million websites out there. So you want to dig a bit a bit deeper to find that original content. Okay, um, videos. Um, these are they sound pretty straightforward, uh, um, but are a, a bit uh, more difficult to, to, to achieve. The biggest thing is their their cost, and uh, a lot of people get scared of you know like oh I'm 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 gonna invest a lot of money. But the, the truth is that the vid videos have the biggest ROI. Uh, of all visual content, whether you're doing straightforward commercials that we all see on on TV, or you're going for by explainer videos, which are really good and work perfectly with uh, products that are new, that are original, or you know services that nobody else offered before. Um, also, creating unboxing videos, which are mostly user-generated content, but you can you know. Uh, fuel it by, by creating proper and, and cool unboxing experiences and they're going to start popping up all over the internet. Um, with uh, people who, uh, people are almost uh, two times more likely to purchase a product after viewing a video. So you definitely want these to be uh, included in your in your uh, campaigns and your marketing strategies. A um, few more things that you can do with videos. Uh, create presentations of whether it's your reports or just interesting sets of data that you want to show to your um, to your users. Um, you can deepen your brand by by telling your brand stories. You know, when I mentioned unboxing videos, go out there to the shipping department and ask the people who work there to tell you how much they love their work. You know, it will deepen that relationship with with your people. And reviews are pretty similar to unboxing videos, user generated content that that can help you a lot. But beware, these also can can break you if your products are not good. But that's a whole separate story. Um, one more thing that I, that I wanted to, to show here is that including a word video in your email subject uh, of the newsletter, um, on average, you'll see 19% uh, rise in the open rate and 65% uh, rise in the click-through rate. Those are the people that will go to your website. Don't just put the video in the email and take them to the YouTube. Take them to your website with embedded video and then create a whole experience that will funnel them from there to whatever your conversion goal is. Um, infographics. Uh, probably my favorite, uh, maybe because at Pixel Row Designs we do so much of them. Um, but I actually really, really love them. Um, well. We all heard the word infographics maybe seven or ten years ago, and now we're seeing them everywhere, and for a very good reason. <clears throat> That's because they get three times more share than any other type of content, and uh, publishers who use um, infographics uh, in, the, in their efforts uh, are seeing on average 12% higher growth rates than those who don't. So uh, again, they are very powerful, and they, they've been here since you know ancient times, from the cave drawings in back back in the <laughs> ancient times. I don't know what year was that, but they call it cave art. But what they actually did is they they uh, explained, hey, this is how we hunt. You know, ancient Egyptians um, were explaining through basically infographics how their daily lives uh, went on, what they did. You know. Um, they didn't explain how they built pyramids, but <laughs> you know. Um, anyways, um, infographics perfect for facts and figures, uh, such as you know, from transportation maps to your company's facts and figures. Uh, they're really good good at teaching. Uh, we already spoke about how good uh, visuals are at connecting at the brain level. So if you want to teach people something. Um, show it to them, you know. Show the show the process to them. Uh, 
we, we at the Pixel Road Designs get um, a lot of companies that want to illustrate uh, and design nicely their, uh, I don't know, internal processes that they print out and, and hang on the walls. You know, so it's a, uh, another usage of, of infographics, uh, like textbooks. Uh, we recently did a couple of books for, for uh, Pearson Education where, where we created a uh, whole set of uh, uh, infographics. You know those, remember those from school, um, cycling with water in nature, you know, cloud, then it rains, then it goes into sea, etc. It's an infographic. They're good for connecting and simplifying data. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick, quick example here. Um, you, what you see right now on the screen is the uh, table with the average credit scores, uh, scores by state in the United States. Uh, presented in a table view, of course, and on the right side is a heat map, or an in, which is a site, subtype of an infographic, which clearly shows you immediately. Both things are color coded, but the right one, the infographic, shows you immediately how much better the north is doing than south, and so on. You know, so again, pretty cool things, and if if possible, go for them. Uh, with that said, it's time for a poll too. Great. So let's get this launched. Mm -hmm. And the question I would like you to answer is how much of your marketing efforts are visual right now? So the votes are coming in. Um, much quicker than before. So we're at about 55% right now. I'll give a, a couple seconds so we can share with the group. Mm -hmm. um, pretty interesting numbers coming in. Okay, 62%. Do a little countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. It looks like 70% of all attendees are voting. Closing the poll right now. There you go. 50 to 75% wins out. Okay. This, is actually, this is actually pretty decent and pretty good. Um, <clears throat> it isn't a trick question like the previous one. I just wanted you guys to uh, compare uh, your current efforts uh, to an estimate for the 2018, uh, which says that 84% of marketing communications will be visual by that time. So uh, this tells me that, that a lot of you are doing a really good job. Um, and <laughs> yay. Uh, so uh, another another survey amongst marketeers um, returned this result on the right that 55% uh, of marketeers are planning to prioritize creating visual content in 2016. And we have just went through a lot of reasons why is this so. Um, another thing um, are the social media. There are actually the visual only social media or heavily relying on visuals like Instagram, Snapchat, Pinterest, Tumblr, and, and, and such, uh, which are the places you definitely want to be if, in case you're, especially if you're uh, targeting younger audiences and people who are hanging on those. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, 40% more likely to get shares if content contains visual elements. 2.3% Facebook engagement, uh, no, sorry, 2.3 times more Facebook engagement for posts containing images. You probably saw, you probably all of, all of you saw this. Okay, so um, how do you create visuals that perform? I kept uh, mentioning performance, performance, performance. Put aside your likings and whether you like this or that color. It's the performance that is important. Um, I'm basically gonna gonna talk about here on about how agencies work, marketing agencies, and how they deal with their projects, uh, so that you can get an insight if you haven't so far, uh, and maybe use it for your own efforts or just to understand better when working with external agencies. So um, 
let's start with explaining the process. Uh, first of all, you want to meet with your teams and analyze the current situation where you are, uh, you know, from your sales department to tell you which products are uh, slowly moving uh, or slower moving, uh, to um, your buying department, maybe they can, you know, fetch you some products that you can sell really good or things like that. So basically, A, analyze the current situation, um, learn what's going on, uh, and identify your goals. What is it that you want to do with your company? What is it that your uh, next campaign is supposed to do? Um, next thing to do is to identify resources, and this boils down to whether you're having uh, enough internal uh, resources, do you have designers or design team or a department, or you need to go with external, you know, marketing companies. Um, working with that team, whoever you choose uh, in the previous step, you'll need to set up a strategy or strategies, because a lot of times, and most of the times, campaigns today um, have multiple uh, multiple strategies and channels that, are, that they're um, sent through, of course. Uh, the next step is to create. We're going to get to that one in a, in a, in a second. And of course, the promote. Um, not going to talk about that. It's not the focus of, the, of this uh, uh, speech. But uh, I want to really stress here the thing that, that uh, we all know, we've all read about it, and we all have it in our mind. But somehow, I keep seeing that not being done uh, a lot. And that is measuring and evaluating could be your biggest step, your, your, your most important step. Whatever you do in the fir the, these first seven steps, uh, the eighth one, uh, measure, evaluate, is probably the, you know, the biggest one. Um, creating. Creating visuals um, is a fun process, I gotta tell you. <laughs> but it all starts with a scope. So whenever a client comes up to us, uh, we need to, and this is what you should do as well if you're doing uh, things internally. Um, you need to come up with a scope. You need to understand what exactly it is uh, that you will need to create uh, your website, your branding, your, you know, um, what are the deliverables, etc., etc., etc. Followed by the very first concept, and that is usually a very rough sketch of what you what you want to do. It doesn't necessarily have to be a drawing, you know, since you're creating visual, but it can be even in words, uh, so that everybody in the process is on the same page and that they're aware um, of what we're gonna do. Right? Uh, this is also a step where uh, you should do a lot of brainstorming um, and. and it's, it's really a good thing to, to do so because uh, you get other people's ideas, right? Um, followed by the draft, the first draft, as we call it, uh, which is basically your first uh, version of design that you will be seeing. Um, these can be just partially, you know, uh, completed and, and are actually partially completed, uh, you know, just to show you colors, to show you the, some basic elements and to confirm once more that we are on the right path, that we are doing the, the right when it comes to concept, etc. Um, of course, feedback is important for each of these phases, uh, but maybe here is the most important, so that we tweak final things before actually uh, delivering the final pro uh, product and launching it. Um, again, one of the things that we all know and that are everywhere, but somehow seem to, uh, to be forgotten a lot of times. I even have this similar thing like on this slide printed out and hanged in front of my uh, computer. Um, you definitely want your content to have value. And this doesn't apply only to visuals. It, this applies to, to any other type of content you're, you're putting out there. Um, you definitely want it to be helpful. You want it to be inspired, uh, in, inspiring and original. Um, you know that these types of content get the most shares, most engagements, etc. But the biggest thing here is that they uh, gain the most for your brand. You know, whenever you help someone or inspire, and whatever they, whenever they identify your original, you're doing something genuine for them. They will appreciate it more, and you know, you'll, you'll see uh, them coming back. For more. Um, 
some of the best practices when it comes to creating design. Uh, first one, pretty explicit, don't tell if you can show. Uh, you know, don't talk about how beautiful your products are or your garments, you know, show them uh, by beautiful images. Again, and <laughs> I'm, I'm mentioning this again because it's so important, be, being original whenever you can. Um, aligning with your goals, uh, we spoke about it a, a bit before, but it's important to be stressed again. Um, and this is purely from my previous practice. I keep seeing that all over uh, the place. Uh, we all know that we have goals, but we somehow keep forgetting about them in the process. We keep talking about, oh, I don't like it, I like it, you know. So goals, goals, goals. Um, of course, they need to align with your identity. Uh, whatever your, uh, if you don't have one, <laughs> if you don't have your visual, and I'm not talking about logo, I'm talking about the style of the images you're using. You know, it's always good to, to have one line of, um, of one style that you're using all over and over. Uh, why? Because of that, um, of, of people being able to rec recognize your brand. So don't mix and match, if possible. Uh, and the last one, pay attention to your users and what they want. Um, again, something that sounds pretty straightforward, but let me give you an example. Uh, a couple of years back, I worked with a company who hired us to uh, work on their uh, visual content for um, social profiles and such. Um, and the, their decision was that they didn't want to um, show images of their products. They wanted to serve all sorts of um, uh, stories, uh, both visual infographics. They did everything, and they did great. They had uh, great engagements and everything. But uh, somebody said, hey, why don't we just put one of the products? You know, we still have pretty good products. Let's just put a straightforward image of our product out there. Uh, we did it, and boom, an explosion <laughs> happened, literally, like that uh, That campaign saw, and we just posted images of, 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 of products, nothing else, we didn't say anything about it, uh, those were the most shared and um, uh, most engaging posts that they ever uh, uh, published up to date, you know, until then, so, um, it turned out that no matter <laughs> what we thought people wanted, to look at the images of products and wanted to share them. So uh, whenever you can, uh, experiment and try, whenever your budget allows you to do so, you know, try these simple uh, ideas. Try everything that you think is an idea. And once you run out of ideas, try with things that you don't think are ideas, you know, that are so dumb that everybody's doing it, but maybe there's a reason behind it. Maybe the reason is because they work so good. So. The thing is, don't run away from 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 ideas that everybody else is, is using as well. A um, couple of words about working with teams, and um, again, this is from my experience uh, from working with with external clients as an you know as an employee of the agency. Um, big one, collaborate, of course. Um, provide answers and information. Um, like we in the Pixel Road, we have a couple of questionnaires that we hand out to the people who come to us. Uh, each of those uh, questions is very important to us, and each of those answers helps us portray a picture of what you want to do. You know, so providing proper information and, and, and answers is is of an essence for for teams. Whether your internal design teams. I, I worked for, uh, in design teams inside companies, and sometimes we were not aware of the goals from the marketing department, even that we were part of it. So try not to, to make that the case in your company. Uh, giving proper feedback, again, um, we have some questionnaires a lot of times, and each of those questions is very, very important to us. Um, but we keep seeing, like, our, our feedback questionnaire for the first phase of the of the project has some 10 or 12 questions, I'm not sure, uh, and we keep seeing people, ret uh, clients returning us two answers. Please, you know, the more you tell us, the, the, and the more precisely you tell us, the better. You, you know, you're going to get a better product at the end, um, being as fast as possible, 
<laughs> of course, um, our, us creatives are delicate creatures, and and you know, uh, we don't like our processes to uh, to be uh, prolonged. Um, and common mistakes: uh, uh, um, doing too much or uh, bad stock. Uh, I mentioned it briefly. Uh, most of the times, especially if you're working for a for a smaller company, you cannot run away uh, from from stock images. But I mentioned, don't go with the first ones. You know, try to find original ones that are not going to be repeating. Uh, the thing is that uh, if you're from I don't know an industry of creating emails and you type uh, on Shutterstock emails vector, I don't know. Uh, the chances are your your com competition who are doing the same thing will be searching for the same images. Try not to pick the same ones, right? Um, also, try not to go with with bad, um, no, sorry, bad uh, stock photography, um, the photos that have no nothing to do with what you're talking about. Uh, you know, just for the sake of throwing in um, a, an image there. Um, this one applies, deciding on the code alone applies to working mostly with, with external teams, external companies. Um, and actually means that um, each price has its reason. You know, um, five heads are usually smarter than one, and teams are usually more expensive because of uh, because there are teams, there are more, there's more people there, uh, but there's more power in more people, you know. So then try to, to evaluate what you actually need, whether you need a, a cheaper solution or a more expensive one. Uh, rushing and not giving enough time, I know that this cannot be avoided sometimes, uh, but we keep seeing clients that um, we have a deadline in a month, uh, we send them a first version and they don't appear for three months, you know, <laughs> sorry, three weeks. And then they come back and they're like, oh, I need it for yesterday. So uh, try to plan your time, just like with any other thing. Try to, to, to plan your time ahead and, and stick to that schedule. Um, all of these things will help you create better, better uh, visuals and better end results. Uh, unrelevant brief, briefly mentioned it before. Um, we need the basics. When we're creating something, we really need the basics and we need to know your uh, things that I explained in the process, your goals, reasons behind it, who is your target audience, etc., etc. Most of the agencies will help you by handing out the questionnaires that will, you know, guide you through the process, through the things that you might have not thought about before. Um, this one is probably the biggest mistake probably the biggest mistake that I'm seeing, and that is prioritizing personal preference over goals. Um, if, if I had another poll question, which I don't, and asked uh, all of you guys here to tell me which is your favorite shade of blue, uh, I bet the answers would be so crazy, you know. Uh, that is because uh, everybody is different, right? Everybody perceives things different. Somebody likes this shade, somebody likes that shape, shade, whatever. Um, but what is common to, to all of us is the goal, which is what we're supposed to uh, be focusing on, you know. And it's really easy to lose, uh, to lose uh, this focus on the goals. Similar thing with the wow factor, when you get a design that is super beautiful, super, super, it has everything that you wanted and everything that you didn't need but you still love it, but the, thing, the problem might be it doesn't work, you know, it doesn't achieve your goal. So, similar thing. Uh, and last but not the least, uh, technical issues, uh, you need uh, you or your people to know technical um, a portion of the work really good uh, to avoid getting bad, you know, uh, bad promotion, if you will. Uh, like, for example, infographics that we did a um, couple of years back were normally, a pro I think, at uh, 1,000 pixels wide um, because they were, at the time, they were appropriate. Today, we're doing 600 pixels because of the mobile devices. You know, uh, you don't want your you, all your time invested and then ruined by, by bad you know, awful pixelation of the images and things as such. 
So um, that was the last, actually, uh, thing uh, that I wanted to, to talk about in, the, in this presentation. Um, remember, people, with, with everything that we mentioned here, uh, the noise, short attention spans, uh, people who, who just open your website and close it, uh, with, with a lot of other marketeers as us, you know, trying, using the same tools, uh, same uh, uh, approach, using visual tools, um, it's more than ever uh, necessary to master your visual content uh, 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 to be to be successful in, in not just content marketing, in marketing in general. Um, with that said, I um, think it's time for Q and A, and thank you very much for listening this part. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff, Nemanja. Really enjoyed it. Um, especially, uh, you know, your tips on gathering feedback and getting questions answered before starting to put together something close to a finished product. Um, I've had that experience numerous times. You send out a questionnaire. You, if you're lucky to get it back, if you do, usually one thing, and then, you know, you'll send a an outline or a, uh, like a production card draft type thing, right? And then what you'll see is there's no feedback given then, but, and you're like, oh, okay, well, I'll move forward to the next step. And then once the, you're almost close to the final product, then everyone's like, oh, I, I want to change this and I want to change that. Um, so really setting those expectations in the beginning, and, and it's, a, it's a team effort, right? So if you're working internally at a company with the branding or the marketing team or the PR team, making sure that you address all of those. And same thing if you're an agency um, working with a client as well. So um, it's, really it's good really stuff. a one-man show, you know. No, it takes no, a team not. to create great things together and, and that collaboration and, and feedback and proper, exactly proper feedback helps it a lot, probably the most. Well, it's interesting, too, because not all companies have brand books or brand briefs together before you start. So sometimes what happens is you'll have a client, you know, that, that says, oh, just look at our site. You'll figure it out type thing. And, and then once you kind of guide them in that direction where, yeah, you really have to put together this palette of colors <laughs> that represents your brand or you really have to put it all in one place, um, then you're helping across the board. So great stuff. Um, we have about uh, 10 minutes to go, so I have a handful of questions to ask you, and I see you had a chance to have something to drink. Um, clear your throat a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I kept sipping the, throughout the presentation. I wouldn't make oh. it. <laughs> Is that water in there or what? Um, so first, um, how do you really know which type of visual element? You went over a lot of different visual elements, right? Um, infographics, video, uh, social media cards, um, web design, whatever it is. So how do you typically know which type of visual element will work best overall with the goals? Like if someone comes to you and says, hey, this is our goal, um, how do you really know where to start and where to begin? Well, <laughs> there's no one answer to that question probably. And the best would be it depends. Really, uh, it depends on the goal. Uh, if your goal is, if if you have identified that your uh, potential users do not understand um, how your product works, you need to first see what are your options. You know, um, whether I'm gonna create an explainer video, maybe I'm gonna do an infographic. You know, you cannot. There's nothing else basically you can do when you want to, to do that. So you try to analyze, uh, and what we do from our previous experience, you know, we have some, oh, we know that some things work better than, than not. You know, try to find the data to support um, what you what you want to make. Well, it's like the it one. It really depends on the goal. It's also like the one example that you had, like, people are having a problem figuring out the e-commerce online ordering process, therefore they are calling the contact number on the site. So the goal seemed to be, hey, let's reduce the stress on the call center, get those sales online, and yeah. uh, it seemed to really work out. 
So that sounds that, great. that one was actually improving uh, uh, in, in usability of the website in numerous ways. There was another thing that we did later on. We removed the hamburger menu. <laughs> I know a lot of people love it, but it turned out in that case specific, and I saw a couple of other times uh, that people, we do understand it as designers, yeah, those three lines are menu, but a lot of other people just don't. They, they skip it and they never realize that there's a menu. Like a website that we did some time ago, um, and you know what they say, when, when you have one person um, giving you feedback, one of your users giving you feedback, there's probably a hundred more that thought the same thing, they just didn't bother to contact you and tell you, you know, they couldn't find that something. Um, that lady came in and said, uh, oh my god, I cannot find anything on your website. And we were like, how can you not find it? It's right there under the hamburger menu. Everything is there. <laughs> but the menu. thing is, yeah, but later on when we tested, we realized that, that uh, a whole bunch, I forgot the number of people did not realize it's a menu at all, you know. So your goal sometimes needs investigation and then defining what you want to do with it, you know. Maybe try even a couple of solutions if the budget allows you to do so and see which one works the best. Sometimes it takes a couple of things to do, you know, not just one. Great answer, great answer. Um, next question coming from Mark is, uh, infographics are of course very visual, um, but they're also often quite text heavy as well. Is there a good text to image ratio for visual marketing out there? What have you seen? I personally don't think there is a specific ratio. Again, <laughs> I'm going to have a diploma answer, it depends. Um, we created, uh, I personally created probably three or four hundred IGs out there and our company created so much of them. Um, we're seeing infographics that have no text at all. You know, there are mostly illustrations or 99% illustrations, but that was their purpose. And the type of content, the type of uh, explanation they were trying to give allowed us to do so. Sometimes we're doing uh, infographics that are nothing more than illustrated stories, but paired nicely, designed nicely. You know, it's way better than just your uh, blog post with images uh, in, you know, cutting it from, from time to time, you know. So they can be text heavy depending again on, on what you're trying to do. If you're telling a story, uh, you're definitely going to have a text there, but it still can be a pretty good and successful infographic. Also, sometimes the ability to visualize data beautifully makes it so you don't have to have the explainer text. Um, exactly. And then also how-to and tutorials, like two examples that come to mind are Lego and Ikea instructions. Um, no text, no writing. But very, yeah. very easy yeah. to follow, especially Lego. Um, much more easier to follow than to actually put them together. <laughs> Understandable in all languages. Yes, exactly. Um, okay. Uh, here's a question uh, about uh, tools to help create infographics. So uh, this person may be from a small business or, or whatever it is. Um, you had mentioned infographics. Are there any free or affordable tools out there for a beginner to start uh, creating their own infographics that you know of? Affordable tools as in software? As in cheap, cheap software to create infographics. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Uh, what we're using are, you know, professional grade tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, you know, Coral Draw and things like that. So um, I, I can check that and see if there are any 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 good, uh, more affordable, cheaper, cheap, cheaper software solutions. Sorry about it, but I, I'm just not using them, so, you know, not, not really yeah. sure. There's a one, one, uh, one service. Um, there's one service or solution someone brought up. It's, it's, it's called Canva. And it's basically drag and drop images and drag and drop whatever. So all the images are on the left and you can drag them. There's free solutions and there's also a paid subscription service with Canva 
Um, okay. It's not just infographics. So, oh wow, like everyone started picto chart. Maybe another one to check out as well. Um, the question box just lit up <laughs> with recommendations. Um, there. Um, where, where, what are your thoughts on where micro content is headed in terms of visuals? Um, it's useful. Uh, where it's headed, I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> where it's headed, uh, but what I know is that it is useful, especially for your daily efforts um, uh, uh, um, on social media. Uh, they have been proven to work really, really well. Uh, you know, from mm, everyday events, if you if you you know follow them and and post things that are connected to them, um, those things work really good. And I think that we'll be seeing way more of them. Uh, a couple of years back, we didn't. Uh, most of our news were presented in a form of a um, regular article, and today, more often than not, we're seeing video. Uh, video news, which are basically, you know, just transferred from from article type to 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 video. Why? Because they're they're working much better today than, you know, other types. So definitely, I think we'll be seeing uh, more and more of them. Great, great. And just for clarification, earlier, like those tools that we mentioned are more template based, not necessarily just free. Um, but also template based. Um, mm -hmm. And then on, on the video side, one interesting thing too is uh, we did a study at SEJ and on um, once you're done with your videos, how to share them socially. And uh, typically uh, your own video that you upload to your own Facebook account versus mm -hmm. uploading a video to YouTube and then sharing it via Facebook. So, um, two times as many likes, three times as many shares, and then seven times as many comments. So when you shared your micro content directly through the Facebook interface rather than just, you know, copying and pasting like. a link, yeah, there's much more interaction too. That's really the beauty of a lot of this is you can yeah. use it across Facebook the board. Wants to do that. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. So does Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that, well, Facebook is trying to, you know, Kill YouTube. Well, I should maybe say that, but, <laughs> no, <I'm trying. laughs> uh, but you know that, that all of their videos, uh, if you upload the video to the to to the Facebook, it auto plays when yeah. you're scrolling. You know, which is not the case with the YouTube. Um, they might even remove the preview for the YouTube. <laughs> like, don't use it. You know. Yeah. Well, we have a couple of other questions, and if you asked some and didn't get them answered, we're going to be sending. Uh, the questions directly to Nemanja and then we'll be sending uh, those out in an email along with our wrap-up of today's SCJ Think Tank webinar on the importance of visual content in 2016 um, with uh, Nemanja Derijevic from uh, Pixel Road Design. So thank you again for taking the time uh, to share this. This is great information and um, a great visual presentation at the same time. Thank you, Lorraine, and thanks to SUJ for, for doing this with us. Absolutely. So uh, for those of you that are still here in the Think Tank, um, be sure to sign up for our next uh, Think Tank webinar, which I'm also hosting. It's the Top 10 AdWords Hacks of All Time with Larry Kim, sponsored by WordStream. Uh, great stuff. Larry is always an excellent presenter, and if you're doing anything in the world of paid advertising or Google, make sure to sign up for that. And uh, like I said before, after uh, today's um, webinar is over, we're going to be uploading this to YouTube. We're going to be sending it out uh, to all attendees, a link to the video and uh, the SEJ wrap-up that's going to be hosted on the blog. And after we close this today, you're going to get a survey. Thank you very much, Bob Ingram. Someone said thank you, good stuff. You're going to get a survey on how we can uh, make these webinars better for all attendees. Um, so thanks again, and uh, we're out. Peace. Thank you. Cheers.